Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we're going to be looking at the U.S. tax reform of 2017. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the global intangible low tax income or also known as guilty. This topic is covered in international accounting or international taxation, also covered on the CPA and ACCA exam. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is what, ha what I house my 1,500 plus accounting, audit, tax, and finance. Please like my lectures, S share them, put them in the playlist, subscribe. I cover all these courses, so any accounting courses you can think of, I do have it covered. Please check out my YouTube. On my website, I do have additional resources in addition to the lectures. I have notes, PowerPoint slides, multiple choice, true, false. And if you're studying for your CPA, 2000 plus CPA questions, please check out my website. StudyPal.co is an artificial intelligence driven study body platform that matches you with a CPA or a CFA candidate. They are located in 85 countries in 2,500 cities. An important prerequisite for this session is understanding the concept of controlled foreign corporation subpart F income. Because believe it or not, uh, CFC and guilty, they're in a sense very similar in concept, as you will see. So first, I'm going to go over the controlled foreign corporation concept, then I will explain guilty because it will make much easier putting guilty into a historical perspective. And the link for this is in the description. I put the link for the whole playlist. So just make sure if you don't understand how CFC work or, or subchapter F, make sure you view the lecture before you keep on going with guilty. Just going to make your life much easier. So guilty is basically a confusing topic. So I'm going to try to simplify this as much as possible. But let's look at the overall picture. This is a review from the prior session just to make sure we understand where we where we stand. So in 2017, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act made the most extensive changes to international tax provisions in the U.S. since 1986. The objective was to reduce, to make the U.S. corporate more competitive internationally and basically to, to reduce their income tax rate from 25, from 35 to 21 and prevent the erosion of U.S. tax base. Simply put, they don't want you to move overseas. They want to be able to tax you. And, and guilty, it's going to try to work on this, prevent the erosion of U.S. tax base. So the most significant change of, of, of the new law was the participation exemption or partial, partial territory system in which foreign subsidiaries is exempt from U.S. taxation. And we already discussed this in details in prior chapter. Other major international tax provision were the deemed repatriation of accumulated earning of accumulated foreign earnings, which which you already covered in the prior chapter. In this session, we will look at the taxation of global intangible low tax income guilty. So in this session, we'd look at guilty, and we would still have to deal with the imposition of base erosion anti tax, which is called beat. We'll talk about this in the next session. So what is this guilty is all about? This taxation of global intangible low tax income. Well, we have to look at it from a historical perspective so we'll be able to understand where it's coming from, where it's originating. But the purpose of it is to simply is to prevent the origin erosion of U.S. tax base. And what is that? What is the erosion of U.S. tax base? Well, U.S. Uh, multi, multi, multinational corporation, multinational and wealthy individuals, they can shift their profit to low or no income tax location when there's a little or no economic activity. So basically, this sounds like the controlled foreign corporation sub chap, sub part F income. You, when we talked about this, we said the U.S. corporation, the multinational and the wealthy individuals, they were shifting their assets, shifting their assets to different places like the Cayman Island and the Bahamas, where there is little or no economic activity, but tax havens. Well, it is still true. It is still true in a sense. That's what it's what that's what it's trying to trying to combat shifting assets somewhere else and shifting income, but we live in a different time. So in 1962, when the controlled foreign corporation and subchapter F income came into place, came into place, the, the, the portable assets were simply, simply put money. So you were able to move your money somewhere else, move your portfolio somewhere else. So it was easy. So this is what I was trying to combat. Okay, you could not move your manufacturing facilities to, to the Bahamas. You can, but it's not as easy than, than transferring your portfolio of stocks and bonds and investments or register there and operate from that country. So the government response to the uh, shift, in, shift in your assets and your money to low, low, 
tax or tax haven countries was the controlled foreign corporation subchapter of income where they combat pass passive income which is the stocks bonds uh, sales income where you just locate there to create sales in other countries and the service income so so the reason i went over this controlled foreign corporation to tell you the government already combating this type of income so if you if, if you shift your passive income overseas they can get you because it's included under assuming you're a controlled foreign corporation and it's it's a passive income it's under sub, sub chapter part f income now what's happening in today's world the economy is much much different now what's happening technology is portable okay what does that mean what it means a company like apple and big tech in general i'm not talking about apple specifically you have google you have microsoft they can transfer their patent to somewhere else for example apple transferred their patent to ireland not well, not one patent lot lot of their patent now then the foreign subsidiaries pay royalties to apple ireland for international sales therefore apple is located in ireland tax haven country and all the international sales goes to apple so the government said, "Well, guess what? That's that's that that, that doesn't sound right because we're not be, we're not being able to tax you." So somehow the government response was, "Let's create this creative idea of called global intangible low tax income." So there are several assumptions being made here. Let's look at some of the assumption. So here we go. So the assumption is any income not supported by fixed asset must be generated from some type of an intangible an idea and the reason why the intangible asset is important because in today's economy all big tech companies all their most important assets are the patents okay so what they're saying is if your income is not supported clearly by fixed asset it must be coming from intangible asset which makes sense right in a sense it makes sense that if it's not the fixed assets that generating your income it must be your intangible asset because you you do need to use assets to generate income okay so the other assumptions that they make here is the patent the patent your patent was created in the US well we can talk about this a little bit further in a moment but that's the other assumption so the first assumption is your income must be coming from intangible asset the second assumption is the income is created uh, the patent itself was created in the u.s well guess what then the income from that patent should be taxed in the u.s so based on these assumptions which is a very creative idea to tax to tax uh, to tax companies okay um in a sense it's a preemptive tax it's like hold on a second we're going to assume we're going to assume it's a patent we're going to assume it was created in the u.s therefore we're going to extend our hands and tax you so notice the uh, the uh, controlled foreign corporation they only they, they they all they only had to worry in the past about subchapter f income now that's no longer the case they have to worry about older income okay but the question is are all patents created in the us and that's questionable because companies us companies they have offices research facilities all over the world in europe and india and australia so that's not really true but the point is the us government want to extend their hand to basically prevent the erosion of the tax base they want you to pay taxes although your international company as long as your u.s company although you're operating internationally they want to have access they want you to pay the taxes now they don't want you to defer anything that's the whole idea behind this global intangible low tax income which is a genius idea if you think about it the, whoever came came up with it it's like really that's that's pretty creative on extending your hand to even active income overseas to tax it now in the US. So beginning in 2018, US corporation now they must include this guilty, this guilty. Now how do we compute this guilty? This is important, the amount. Well, the amount to be included is based upon two concepts. So they're gonna look at two things. They're gonna look at your tested income and a specified return. And this specified return, it's specified by who? By Uncle Sam. So they're gonna tell you what the specified return is. So the tested income, what's tested income? Is the aggregate amount of foreign subsidiary income across countries less certain deduction. So simply put, all of your income, all of your income, and here we're not talking about income that's sub uh, subpart F income because that's taxed separately. So all your other income, simply put, all your other active income. Okay. So guilty can exist whether the corporation derives income from intangible asset or not. So they don't care whether you have intangible asset or not. Sometimes you don't, the intangible asset are, are not listed on the balance sheet, but you are still subject to guilty whether you are, your income is derived from intangible asset or not. Now that's the tested income. Think of tested income, any income that that's not taxed because you are a controlled foreign corporation operating overseas. Okay. Now the specified return, it's specified by Uncle Sam 
is 10%. It's, a, it's, it's an arbitrary by the US government of your qualified business asset investment, QBIA, which is generally equal to your book value of the tangible depreciable asset. Simply put, your specified return is take your book value of your fixed asset, fixed tangible asset, multiplied by 10%. Okay? Now, if one, if the tested income is greater than the specified return, then you have guilty. So if your tested income is greater than your 10% of your fixed 10% of your fixed asset, which is your book value of tangible asset. Now, what's wrong with the book value computation? Well, guess what? Different companies will have different book values because depending on when did they bought the asset, how are they depreciating the asset? So it's very, there's a lot of questions, Mark, about how to, com not how to compute the, the, the validity of the book value. Also, there's a question mark about the 10%. So what they're saying is your book, your assets, you simply put your fixed asset are generating 10% of your income. That's, that's what they're saying. That's your return. Is you know, some companies the return on fixed asset is more, some companies the return on fixed asset is less. Also, your book value is dependent upon how when did you bought those assets. Okay, but let's take a look. Let's let's go a little bit further. So what happened is after you take the different uh, if one is greater than two, if your tested income is greater than 10%. So if you, simply put, if you're making income that's more than 10% of your fixed income, then what we assume is that must be coming from intangible asset. Then the government would say, okay, you can deduct up to 50% of the amount of guilty included in taxable income. So we're going to give you a deduction of 50%, which basically then your effective tax rate on that income is 10.5. So your effective rate is 10.5. Okay. Then the tax, the tax on that guilty can be further reduced by 80% of the foreign tax credit. So if you pay taxes overseas, we're going to give you 80% on that, on that uh, foreign tax credit to reduce your taxes. Therefore, the U.S. corporation whose controlled foreign income earned in the jurisdiction with low average foreign income tax rate will be most affected because they have no tax credit to offset it with. So they're looking for, you know, companies where they have the assumption is they're using intangible asset and they are located in low tax jurisdiction. This way, they have no tax credit to use. Now, also the guilty tax credit has its own foreign tax credit basket. So it's not, it's separate than the other three foreign ta tax foreign tax credit baskets that we talked about in the prior chapter. If you're not sure what these are, look in the prior session. So if your foreign tax credit allowed exceed, exceed the amount uh, gold um, amount owed on guilty, you know, you have an excess foreign tax credit. Unfortunately, there's nothing you can do with this excess foreign tax credit that, that's that's specific to guilty. Simply put, you cannot go backward one year, you cannot carry it forward 10 years like for the other foreign tax credit, excess foreign tax credit. So once if you don't use it, you lose it. Okay. But the good thing about this, once your income has been included in the U.S. through guilty, that's it. Now you can bring the money back tax-free. You don't have to worry about anything. So simply put, the, the overall idea, the U.S. government wants to tax you now on all your income. It doesn't matter whether it's subpart F income or active income. If they tax you now, they're going to tax you at 10.5. So they're going to give you a break. Now, is this a good thing for the corporation, bad things? That That's... It's, it's, it, it just started. So this is starting in 2008. So we're going to find out later if the U.S. government is better off. And I'm sure the U.S. government is better off because they can tax the money now. The money is worth the money worth now more than if you receive it down the road. So the government, the government wants their money now. That's simply put, but they're giving you a break. Okay. So the best way to illustrate this is to actually work an example. So in 2018, this corporation, B Corporation, uh, foreign subsidiaries had an aggregate property plant and equipment, which is the tangible property plant and equipment of 20 million. So if we take 20 million, multiply 20 million by 10%, it means you have $2 million. So what they're saying is this, what they're saying is this, your fixed asset of 20 million should be generating on average to you as a U.S. corporation 10%. We're okay with that. They're saying we're okay with that. We can accept that. Therefore, this two million is coming from tangible asset. But let's take a look at this. You, you generated aggregate before tax income of five million. Well, you generated a five million worth of income. We think two million should should be coming from your fixed asset. Well, guess what? The access is three million. This access three million must be coming from your intangible asset. And this is where guilty comes into place. They say, okay. 
So the excess is the gross amount of guilty. Now, this is not the net amount. They're going to give you a break on that. But the point is, if you have 20 million of assets, you should have 10% return as fair, as fair. And we accept that. We're not going to tax you on that. But anything in excess, it must be coming from intangible asset, which is a very, very questionable assumption. But we have to live with this because that's the law. Okay. Then what they do after you compute the 3 million, so 5 million minus 2 million, you get to the 3 million, you can deduct half of that. So immediately they would say, okay, we're going to give you another break. You know, so say, okay, not the 3 million, maybe half of it is intangible asset. Okay, therefore, we're going to give you a break. You can subtract half of it. Now, this is the guilty included in the U.S. parent taxable income. Now, this money is taxable, 1.5 million. So 1.5 million, if, you, if we take 1.5 million based on the U.S. tax rate is 21%. Your U.S. tax liability is 315. Now, here's what's going to happen. This is your U.S. tax liability. Let's assume that this company paid on average 16% overseas on their taxes. What does that mean? If they paid 16%, 1.5 million, if they paid 16% on that, it means they paid $240,000 in foreign taxes. Guess what? The US government is going to give you 80% credit, which is 80% times times 240, that's 192. Therefore, we're going to reduce your taxes by an additional 192,000. Therefore, your net tax liability is 123 thousand one hundred and twenty three thousand so this is basically how we computed guilty so they gave you a few breaks few breaks again the government is eager to get their money now that's that's the whole point the government is eager eager to get their money now therefore they're going to make this assumption that your excess income again if you understand it it's very important that you understand what you're doing what they're saying is this three million three million the excess amount is coming from intangible asset then we're going to tax you on that we're going to give you a break we're going to give you 50 percent deduction we're going to assume that 50 percent of it is not then we're going to give you tax credit for all the tax credit that you paid overseas now if you're in a tax haven country you will not have the 16 percent or the 16 percent will be less then the u.s government share will be higher so that's the whole that's the whole thing i hope this uh, session explained the uh, the concept of guilty in the next session we would look at the beat base erosion anti anti-abuse tax which is beat now i'm gonna I'm going to also invite you once again to visit my website if you have uh, if you'd like to see additional lectures I do have lectures on many topics I strongly suggest you uh, subscribe it's an investment in your career good luck study hard